anyway, open your Bibles this evening to James chapter 4, two Mondays ago. God gave me a message from Proverbs. I'm talking, what is today, Wednesday? So nine days in Nilabai? Nine days in Nilabai, nagandam ko sa mensahe. And I thought, oh, of course, I'm going to preach it on Wednesday. And then, no joke, three o'clock this morning. Alas tres, karong buntag, ni mata ko, and God wouldn't let me go back to sleep. And between three and five o'clock, God gave me this message that I'm going to preach tonight. First, God preached it to me. And, um, and uh, now I'm going to preach it to you. And if you don't like it, that's okay. I didn't like it when God preached it to me. And um, James chapter 4, verse 10. James chapter 4, verse 10. Kung nana say amen. Amen. Tanaman ng dog, palio. Para sa pagbasa sa pulong sa Diyos. James chapter 4, verse 10. Then we're going to read a verse in 1 Peter. <coughs> James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. Ipabos ang imong, ang, I'm sorry, ang inyong kaugalingon diha sa pananaw sa ginoo o siya mo pataas kaninyo. Now turn over to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. We see a very similar verse. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 5. Hey, Beth. Remember? Look at me, sweetheart. Remember. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. I like the, that phrase, in due time. Sabasaya, verse 5. Sa saan paagi, kamung mga batanon, ipailalom ang inyong mga kaugalingon nga to sa anksyano or mga tigulang. Oo, ang tanan kaninyo magpasakop sa usa o usa o pagsulob o Pagkamapausanon kay ang Diyos nagabatok sa mapagarbohon o nagahatag sa grasya nga to sa mapausanon. Busa ipaubos ang inyong mga kaugalingon ilalong sa gamhanang, I'm sorry, gamhanang kamot sa Diyos aron siya magbayaw kaninyo sa hustong panahon. AJ, step back. The title of my message comes from the first two words from both of these, from two of these verses. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. Ipaubos ang inyong kaugalingon. I believe the message will help you tonight. It helped me last night, or actually this morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Nagatoko kanimuntabang ninyo kung ikamaminaw na ko... Dearly Father, please bless the message tonight. Fill me with your spirit as I preach. Empower me, Lord. God, would you work in hearts? Would you change someone's life tonight? Would you help us to recognize the necessity of regularly humbling ourselves? Please, God, bless the message. Give me a clear mind. Thank you, God, for our people being faithful through the, through the last few weeks when we couldn't have church. Lord, I pray, God, that we go forward now and make a difference in the Pitan and uh, 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 across Zamboanga and around the world. God, would you use us, please? Bless the service tonight. Fill me with your spirit. I beg you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God's command to his people is very simple. Not easy. You understand the difference with that? Some things are easy and some things are simple, but they're very hard. Like one preacher used to say, it's like shoveling sand. Simple kaayo. That's something you shovel. What is that in the Bala. Simple kaayo. Pero lesun. You know what? The command is simple. Humble yourselves. Ipaupos ang inyong 
Calvin England. It does not say humble your wife. It says humble yourself. Wala na gingon kinahanglan ipabos ang imong bana o imong asawa kinahanglan mupabos sa imong kaugalingon. Humility, I'm sorry, humility is the very foundation of Christianity. Listen to me tonight. Ang pagkamakpaubsanon mao ang patukuranan sa tibuok Christian life. Listen now. You can't even get saved without humility. You can't be saved until you admit that you can't save yourself and you need help. I'm a dirty sinner. I believe he died on the cross. He paid for my sins. And I will accept his free gift. I don't deserve it, but I believe it and I'll accept it. No one has ever gotten saved without humbling themselves and putting their faith in Christ. Salvation, I'm sorry, humility is the foundation of Christianity. You can't be saved until you humble yourself and admit you need salvation. But not only that, you can't succeed as a Christian without humility. That's a hard word. I'll get it. God doesn't bless proud Christians. Ang Diyos nilig mo panalangin sa garbusong ang mga Kristohanon. We read it a minute ago in 1 Peter 5, 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. That means you should wear humility like a jacket and cover everything with humility. It should cover it. Be clothed with humility. Why? For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Can I say to you tonight, may I remind you, Truth Baptist Church, we're back in church together. Can I remind you something? We can do nothing without God's help. Amen. Jesus said, John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, without me, ye can do nothing. It doesn't say Gamai Mahimo, it says Walai Mahimo. Ye can do nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. And he says, I give my help, I give my grace to the humble. I give grace to the humble, God says. I'm saying tonight, you can't succeed for God. You can't succeed as a husband. You can't succeed as a wife. You can't succeed as a parent. Because without him, we can do nothing. And he says, I only help those who humble themselves. But I noticed something very interesting today that I'd never noticed before. I don't know why I'd never thought of this, but I've never heard anybody else talk about it. Notice something. It says, humble yourselves. It does not say, keep yourselves humble. It says, Ipaubos ang inyong kaugalingon. Do you know what that means? God is assuming 
that every Christian will have times when their heart becomes proud. He doesn't say stay humble. He says when you get proud, humble yourself again. And when you get proud again, he says every Christian struggles with pride and when it happens, humble yourself again. That encourages me. That encourages me. It does. Because God understands how we struggle. He didn't say stay humble. He said, when the pride comes, humble yourself again. You know, if I say, come here, AJ. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. All the way down. All the way down. There we go. All the way down. There we go. Now, AJ sitting on the floor, right? Right? If I say, AJ, sit down on the floor. Can he sit down on the floor? No, he already is. Right? If he wants to sit down, he has to stand up again. Okay, AJ, sit down. Okay, get back up. Sit down. You can't sit down if you're already sitting. Right? Right? So that means if I have to humble myself, that means pride has come into my heart again. God says, Thank you, AJ. You can sit down on your chair, not the floor. When I realize that pride has crept into my heart. God says, when that happens and you realize it, push it back down. The Bible says in Proverbs 11 verse 2, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. I want you to notice the first word. It says, when, not if. Now I know in the sign it says con, dele con. And actually the translation is sadiha in the Bible, which means when, it does not mean if. You know what? Sadiha or sadihang means when, it never means if. Con and con can both mean when or if. Right? God says, when pride cometh. Guess what? I don't care if you're the best Christian in this room. There will be days that pride comes into your heart. I hate to, hate to disappoint you, but there's days that pride comes into my heart. I know none of you believe that. I know. I'm just kidding. You're all looking, yes, Pastor Mike, we believe that. <laughs> and, uh, and we're so glad you know. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. So the hung ungarbo, naga abut, na nan, naga abut, anka ulao. No matter how strong of a Christian you are, is unlik unchukana Christian, there will be times when the ugly pride will raise its head. And that's why God says, humble yourself. When you realize, here's the difficulty with pride. It can come into your heart and you don't even know it. You ever done that? You live somehow, live a certain way for like a month and then all of a sudden you realize, man, I'm proud and selfish. You ever been there? Okay, I know, I know. I'm the only sinner in my church. It's such a blessing to have such a godly membership. Why you listen to me preach? I don't know. When you realize the pride has come into your life, you say, it's time to humble myself again. Listen to this statement. This is what's so encouraging to me. Staying humble is not a one-time event. One time. One time long. You get saved. You're saved forever. Jesus gives you eternal life. Jesus says, You're saved forever. It's one time. But humbling yourself is every day. It's a day by day event. You must regularly. Kanunai. Wopa. Ubo. Simon. Kaugalingon. That's why God said through James, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord.
But let's just be honest tonight. Humility is hard. Can, can we just be real? It's hard to be humble. Simply, pero let's do it. It's hard to stay humble. Well, Pastor Mike, I, I, don't, I don't struggle with humility. <laughs> if you honestly believe that, you have the worst kind of pride, the kind you can't see. I heard a preacher one time say, I don't struggle with pride because I know how small I am. I, Whoa! You don't struggle with pride? If you don't struggle with pride, you already surrendered to it. That's like a guy laying on the mat. Like boxing shot, Manny Pacquiao. He's laying there flat on the mat. He says, I don't struggle with Manny Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. na hip na hulog na Building na jolan. Everybody struggles with pride. And it's a daily event. And here's what makes it so difficult. Pride is the sneakiest sin in the human heart. Is that any of sneaky? Ukui? Sneaking in, right? Pride is the sneakiest. What would that be? Ma ukui? Pinaka ku? I don't know. <laughs> it's like translating. There's 15 ways to say everything. Okay. Watch now. Stay with me here. Here we go. Here we go. Pride can sneak into our hearts lots of different ways. We get proud of our talents, our ability, abilities. We start thinking we're better than others because we have an ability. It's amazing to me how, listen, how proud a guy can be because he can put a ball in a basket. Wow! Man, we should make you the president. You can put a ball through a, with a, through a hoop. Wow! But we are so proud. You can bounce the ball. My four-year-old can bounce the ball too. But we get proud of our abilities. We get proud of our looks. I never understood it when I was in Dumaguete how much time the guys spent looking at the mirror on my motorcycle. I'd walk by and they'd have the mo my, they'd take my motorcycle mirror and they'd twist it maybe. And I'd walk by and say, but the guiapo and... <laughs> I said, delete my katabang, just, just give up. I don't understand. And you girls go ahead and laugh. You do the same thing. You just have a bigger mirror. <laughs> you want to see the whole face at once. I know. But we get proud of our talents, our abilities. We get proud of our looks. Never mind. None of you have that. Okay. But I don't. <laughs> just kidding. How about this one? We get proud of our intelligence. Proud of our knowledge. We get proud of our possessions. Have you ever met somebody who used to be poor and then they went overseas and when they came back they had money and they were too good to talk to you? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, not like poor time. Oh, poor prayer. I got one quick time, but I need more. You ever, you ever, they don't say that, but that's how they act. You know what I'm talking about? Pride. Why? Because they have money. My Bible says the Lord gave, the Lord taketh away. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. If I have something good, it came from God. How foolish. We get proud of our possessions. We get proud of our character. Our faithfulness. I have... I, I, I make myself do right. Now watch here, watch, 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 watch. You see how a good thing can lead to pride? Character is good. And we need it. And I'm going to keep preaching it. 
Kiranatas, Matal, and I mind the Tasan, my heart is still getting with the children. I don't so we can make a difference in the beat down in the world. I'm a preacher on character because we will never make a difference in the beat down until we have some character. Amen. Let me tell you something, we can get proud of our character. Well, it's time I'm going to go to the world, so I'm going to go to the world. Gawi, my own batasan. Sometimes we even get proud of our service for God. I'm doing more for God than anyone else. Are you listening? We can get proud of our soul winning. I had more soul saved than that than anybody this week. Get proud of our our uh, 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 results and how God's using us, which leads me to the next thought. Sometimes we even get proud because of the blessings that God has given us in our lives. This is a real danger for pastors. God starts to bless the church. He starts to grow and the pastor starts thinking, Yeah, this is because of me. And we get proud because of how God is blessing us. And we start saying, I know why God's blessing me, not them. And God says, um, I turned that faucet on and I can turn it off. What is it? Right now at our house, we have, we have a pressure tank. And I, and I, our water system at our house is crazy. Like, you can't so well. And anyway, it's exciting. We have a pressure tank. A couple of moments on pressure tank, di ba? Our pressure tank, about a week and a half before quarantine, got a hole in the bottom. And you can't fix that. And then, um, the workman, the trabajante, uh, the, lady, the guy who works for our landlady, he came and looked at it and he said, well, you can still use it. It's just going to leak water while you're using it. I said, okay. And then we got quarantined. And the whole time we were in quarantine, that hole got bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, it is firing water. Our backyard is a flood. When we take a shower inside, there's as much water outside as there is inside. So what we do is, there's a valve on, that goes from the, from the water tank into the pressure tank, so we just close it. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Just take the red valve and like that. You know what I'm talking about? But I've noticed something. If you're inside using the water and somebody turns off the valve, you don't have water anymore. The person who has the power of the valve controls how much water you get. Are you listening? Let me tell you who controls the valve of blessing in your life. And let me tell you the fastest way for God to turn off the valve. Just get proud of the blessing he gave you. And he says, I can stop that. Can I say to you today, God doesn't bless us because we deserve it. God blesses us because he's good. Now certainly, God blesses certain things. God blesses faithfulness. God blesses righteous living. But any blessing He gives us is better than we deserve. We don't deserve it. We deserve to go to hell. So go on, just go up in the mall. My own family, my own sin behind. Cannot go in my own shot. Let me go in my own bar. It's not because we're good. It's because He's good. But we get proud about so many things. And I say we because I fight with the same battles. The fastest way to turn off the blessings in your life is let the pride come into your heart. You see, I've learned something. God is very good at humbling us. Hanas judshas kanato. I told the story before. I was in Dumaguete, I don't know when, but Michael was in church with us by then. 
Brother Michael was an usher. He was the ugliest usher in the whole church, just like here, but uh, But anyway, Brother Michael was sitting in the back corner and um, before the service. So I was walking out of the auditorium, and as I walked by, Brother Mike, I'm sure remembers this. He's wicked. And as I walked by, I went like that and kicked his foot, just messing with him, you know, just like, like hassle. And I kicked his foot, but I forgot how slippery the floor was. <laughs> Who washed that floor? So I, somebody was using that coconut or something. I don't know. They're done, look, Jordan. Here's what happened. When I cooked that way, this foot here went the... I don't know where it went, but all I know is I went down flat. I, I didn't fall like this. I mean, I was flat on the floor. And do you know what Brother Michael did? He said, oh, Brother Mike, are you okay? No, he didn't say that. He laughed. Not because I want to talk. Well, I'm going to talk to you with a cobra. I'm going to talk to you. Huh? Huh? No film, no film. Hallelujah. I'd be viral. I'll tell you, I'd be viral. Go watch. God is very good at doing that to us. I'm doing fine serving God. Man, I'm a great Christian. Wow! You ever been there? And you're laying there flat on your back going, okay, maybe I'm not such a good Christian. And God says, nope. Come on now. You know, sometimes God lets us fall just to teach us we need him. Shamoto mekitama. Ma, what's the word? Mahulok? Mahulok, fall? Mapukan. Mapukan, mahulok, aron. Mopakita na to, makita, kinahang ng pakaniya. God can humble us. But listen, can I tell you something tonight? That's not what He wants to do. He doesn't want to knock us down. He wants us to humble ourselves. God doesn't want to put you flat on the floor. He wants you to humble yourself. Can I tell you? Humbling yourself hurts. But when God hurt, humbles you, it hurts much more. I've done it both ways. But here's the key tonight. If we want to humble ourselves so God doesn't do it, if we want to learn how to do it, here's the key. We have to learn how to recognize pride quickly. Because sometimes pride comes in and we don't see it for a while. I'm serious, that happens to everybody. But the better you get at spotting it, the better Christian you will be. spot recognize I know that word, but I can't hear it. There's so many ma's, I was confused. Watch now. Now all the young people are going, Matikud, don't talk Matikud. It means notice. That's another Magmatnon. Is that similar? Magmatnon. Prio, prio, doot. Watch now. We need to learn to recognize pride in our own lives. We're very good at seeing it in other people's lives. Hanas juta mukita o garbo de asa uban. Pero mas lusug na mukita sa atong gawling So remember, Jesus talked about the, the beam in the eye. That's a pride issue. Tonight, I want to give you two or three symptoms of pride to recognize in yourself. Ways that I try to recognize when I start to have pride in my heart. How do you recognize? When I more how do you recognize it before God says, enough? <laughs> How do you know when you need to humble yourself? Are you listening to me tonight? All that's introduction. Now we get some application. 
How do you know when you need to humble yourself? Just like if somebody says, Pastor Mike, I'm oh, well, God, I'm coughing, I'm going to get a fever, I'm fever, Pastor Mike, I'm going to get a fever, do you know what I'm going to say? You have COVID. Every, everybody in my family lost their sense of taste or smell or both. I was the only one that didn't lose it. It just got a little weird. I, didn't, I hated, when I first got sick, I hated the smell of eggs. I ate eggs for breakfast every day. But Julie will tell you, I, I don't want those eggs. They smell terrible. They don't taste good. Now, if you have a cough, maybe you have COVID, maybe you don't. Right? COVID but Julius, he's saying, Pastor Mike, I lost my taste. I said, you have COVID. He's like, no, I don't think so. Yes, Julius, you have COVID. See, there are certain symptoms that are very obvious. And I want to show you those symptoms tonight in the area of pride. How do you know when pride has come in? How do you know when you need to humble yourself? Three times. I'm going to give you three different times or ways to recognize the symptoms. Number one, watch now. This is a tough one. You know you need to humble yourself when you can't admit your mistakes without making excuses. If you can't admit it when you're wrong, if you always have an excuse, it's because of him, it's because of her, it's because of my situation. If you always have an excuse, you listen to me, that is one of the clearest symptoms of pride. That's like losing your taste. That's good. And when you can't admit when you're wrong, that's pride. I want you to take a moment and look at your own life. Don't think about anybody else, but think about yourself. When was the last time that you admitted that you messed up and you didn't make an excuse or blame anybody else? You just accepted the blame. When was the last time that happened? For most of you, you'd have to say, Pastor Mike, I can't remember. I'm sorry, that's a symptom of pride. Are you telling me you haven't made any mistakes in the last three or four weeks? Are you telling me that? So why don't we admit it and apologize? I would like to say very clearly, Christians apologize when they do wrong. First to God, second to the person they hurt. Ang tinood Christian magsorry kung masayop sila. When was the last time, watch, that you said I'm sorry, but you didn't try to somehow blame the other person? Isn't that what we do? I'm sorry, okay, sorry nga kung nagsulitin na kabayin mo, pero dalit dapat ka nagsulitin kabayin ako. You see what you're doing? You're blaming the other person for your sin. They didn't make you do wrong. You chose to do wrong. Oh, kung ganahan siya, magsari, kanang ihang, what was the word I'm looking for? What's that word you taught me, Julie? His business. What is that? Remember you taught it? She forgot. Wala siya kabalo. Julie is my Messiah teacher who forgets after she teaches it to me. And, uh, watch now. Here's what I'm talking about. A simple statement. I'm sorry, that was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. Will you forgive me? Sorry, Kyle. Uh, 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 watch now. Here's a sentence in Messiah. Ako ang nasayop. Sakto, di ba? Ako ang nasayop. Walay pat baso sa upan. Ako ang nasayop. Paliop. Asayo ako paliop. And let me just take a time out right here. And I feel like I need to teach something that I've never taught before. But I, I, I've missed it. I should have taught it before. 
I've taught many times Christians humble themselves and say they're sorry. But I have failed to teach on this. What should you do when someone apologizes to you? Many of us are very, very bad at accepting apologies. Dilitahana sa pagdawa sa pagsari? I don't know how to say it. Pagsari sa uban. I want you to listen to me right here. One of the biggest reasons that most Filipinos don't apologize is because they know when they apologize, the other person is going to embarrass them. Listen now. When a person humbles themselves and says, I am sorry, Kung lahat tao magpabos na sa yung kagulang o magsorry kanimo, you listen to me. You don't need to humble him anymore. Dali ka kina magpabos niya. Na bos na. Listen, they don't need a lecture. You hear me? They don't need a lecture. But we feel like. Well, they're apologizing, and I don't know what to say, so I'm going to kind of scold them for what they did. They already know it's wrong. That's why they're saying I'm sorry. Well, I just don't feel like he really means it. Well, sincere. That's not your business. Well, you accept. Watch. Listen, listen, listen. When someone tells you I'm sorry, two things. Number one, you tell them that you forgive them. And then number two, you confirm that you love them. Accept the apology. Someone comes and says, whether it's a husband, a wife, a brother, a sister, a, 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 a friend at church, someone says, I'm, I said something stupid yesterday. I know I hurt your feelings. I'm sorry. That was dumb. Listen, that is not the time for you to say, yes, you really hurt me. And let me explain why. Shut up. That's the time to say, I forgive you. What is that? Pasailo on kanako? Nagpasailo ko ni mo? Ipasailo kanako? Gana. Here's an even better one. We teach an even better one. I already forgave you. Ipasailo na. Bisa ng wala pagka ng ayaw sa pasailo. Tumunay ko mako ni mo. Higala pa ta. That's what a Christian does. That's what a Christian does. They don't give a lecture. You understand lecture? Why? A sermon. But there's something in our hearts. Let's just be honest. There is something in our hearts when someone hurts us. That's a get that. And then they try to apologize. There's something in us that wants to make them grovel. Does anybody besides JD who was helping me earlier understand the word grovel? It's not gravel. No, it's not sand either. <laughs> Watch now. Shh. Here's the Visayan phrase that's similar. Listen. Not thy doubt on tingwasa kasingasi. Kung lain tao magsorry, magpalbus na siya sa sa yung kagulian ng atubangan na to. Natay tinguha. Ganahan ta mo tunog sa ilang pagkatao. Did I say it right? Push them lower. Walk on them. Make sure they know just how bad they are. I'm gonna say it right here. That is wicked. That is pride in its grossest form. The reason you want to push them further down is because you don't have pride. Kana ang pinakalaw ay ng klase sa garbo ang laing tao nag pausob sa yung kawlingo dayon ikaw magpubos. You push them further down. That's wrong and that's the reason people don't apologize to you. Because the last time they tried you humiliated them. It's wrong. Christians don't only say I'm sorry. Christians also accept, apo accept apologies. And if you were wrong, 
also they hurt you but they apologize first you accept the apology and then you ask for their forgiveness for what you did wrong how do you know when pride is coming to your heart when you can't ever admit you were wrong without making some kind of an excuse it's my mom and dad's fault it's my brother's fault it's my teacher's fault step in no, it's you. We need some men and some ladies who will take responsibility for their own decisions. Nobody can make you sin except you. So if you do wrong, admit it. Admit it. We need to humble ourselves and Apologize and learn how to accept an apology. It would help our church so much if we would practice this. Some kind of an argument. Watch now. Don't talk now. Don't talk. Watch now. There's an argument and the first person realizes I was wrong and they come and they apologize. The immediate response, depende, sempre, if it, you know, you have to be appropriate, guys, girls, etc. But the immediate response should be, of course I forgive you. Handshake. Or maybe a hug if it's appropriate. We need to learn that. It would help our marriages. It would help our, our relationships. It would help our relationships with our kids. Hey, parents, learn to forgive your kids. Stop reminding them of the mistake they made three weeks ago. Punish them for the mistake and then forget it. Are you listening? Once the punishment is over, it's over. I spank my children, but then it's over. Humanana. And I don't remind them of it again. They already paid the price. How do you know? How do you know that your, your pride is starting to stand up? How do you know you need to humble yourself before God does? Number one, when you can't admit your mistakes without making excuses. Number two, when you feel, listen now, when you feel a constant need to defend your reputation. It comes when you feel like you always have to defend yourself. Something you don't defend. I lost the word. I can't say it. Mani or mana? Mani, mani, manalipot, manalipot. Kina hanglan nagbabit tanga kina hanglan manalipot sa atong kagulingon dumo. Unsang tao naghuna huna kabayan kanato. Now listen to me for a minute. Can I explain to you what what pride is? Shh, listen. Can I explain to you what pride is? Pride is thinking highly of yourself and wanting everybody else to agree with you. That's a good definition, isn't it? Angarbo, what is, what is thinking highly of yourself? Is that mapahitas on? Naghunuhuna o taas kabayin sa mong kagulingon? Mapahitas on? Naghunuhuna o taas pagkabayin sa mong kagulingon? Kabayin sa mong kagulingon? Huwag nagatinguha ng tanan lang yung taong magkuhi yung kanimo. That's pride. Pride is worrying about what everybody else thinks about you. Instead of thinking, how can I help Sandy and how can I help Gladys and how can I help Adine? How can I help Carla? And how can I help Michael? Nobody can help Michael. And uh, <laughs> but instead of thinking, how can I help them? We think, what are they thinking about me? Do they like me? Do they respect me? Pride. Pride. Have you ever read Philippians chapter 2, verse 7? Turn with me, Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. I want to show you a verse. Just for the record, I haven't preached here in like six services, so I'm going to preach all those sermons now. So we're going to get out about 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. And <laughs> nah. Philippians 2, 7. Can I say we spend way too much time worrying about what other people think of us? 
Sige, sige, magkabala ko. Kung saan lain tayo, maghunong ng kabayan ka na ako. Sayang. There's so much better things you could do with your time. Philippians 2.7. Philippians 2.7. But made himself, this is talking about Jesus Christ. I love Philippians 2. But made himself of no reputation. Wait a minute. It doesn't say a good reputation. It says no reputation. I didn't put the sign in here. Let me try my own. Nga naga imo sa yan kaugalingon nga walay dungo. Sakto, di ba? Watch now. Jesus never worried about what people were thinking of him. He only worried about helping them and giving them what they needed. Verse 8 in English, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. You see, no reputation and humility go together. Calvin Sela. We have an expression in English, hand and glove. Something in your glove, the hand fits, right? Humility fits into not worrying about your reputation. I'm not talking about your testimony, that's different. Your reputation is what people think about you. Your testimony is what other people think about Jesus because of the way you live. You should worry about that. That's your testimony. But we worry too much about what people think about us. Listen to this here. In his entire earthly ministry, Jesus never defended his reputation. He didn't. Read the debate sometime in John. Listen to this statement I'm about to make here. I'm going to help some of you. Jesus didn't feel that he needed to prove anything. Think about it. The devil comes to Jesus. And what does the devil say? If you're the son of God, I mean, if you're really God's son, I kind of doubt it, what was sure, but if you're really God's son, why don't you just make those stones into bread? Do you know what we would say if we were Jesus? We'd say, I'll show you, watch this, bread not. That's what we would do. We would try to prove it, wouldn't we? I told you I'm the son of God. Jesus didn't do that. Do you remember the story when... Uh, Jesus was going to the house. At, was it Jairus with a 12-year-old daughter? Jairus. My Sunday school teacher. There we go. Jairus had a 12-year-old daughter. And she was dying and then she died. Remember? And Jesus got there. Remember what he said? Why make ye this ado and weep? I got to look up that word ado in the beside. I don't know what it is. Ado means... You're all upset and I'm making a big ado. I should have looked it up in the sign of Bible. Why are you making a big deal? Because Jesus said this. She's not dead. She's just sleeping. Do you remember what they did? They laughed him to scorn. I think that's translated or something like that. They laughed him to score. Now, you wait a minute. He was getting ready to resurrect that girl. Deba? Now, here they are laughing. <laughs> You're so stupid. Who do you think? She's dead. Putol. Hmm? Watch now. And Jesus could have walked over and said, Get up. And then, Kinsa ang maula. Sila. They would have been the embarrassed ones, wouldn't they? Could he have proven that he had the power? Could he have proven it? Did he? Do you know what he did? Get them out of here. Get out. Send them all out. And he resurrected the girl and said, don't tell anybody. You know why? He didn't have to prove anything. When you feel like I have to prove that I'm a good Christian... Listen to me. That's not Christianity. 
That's not a characteristic of Christianity. That's a characteristic of pride. I'm going to show them who I am. Why? The Bible says there's only one thing we're supposed to prove. Romans 12, 2. Proving what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you know what our goal is and life should be in life? I want to prove to the whole world that God's will is the best way to live. That should be our goal. But when we're saying, I'm going to show everybody I'm a better Christian than they think I am, that's pride that needs to be pushed back down. And i got to get done. Here we go. Quickly, last one. Number three. How do you know when you need to humble yourself? Number one, when you can't admit your mistakes without making excuses. Number two, when you feel a constant need to defend your reputation or prove something. Number three, when you can't benefit. Here we go. Here we go. How do you know you need to humble yourself? When you can't benefit from preaching because you're always thinking of someone else who needs the message more than you. Here's what we do. Sit there in church. I mean now. And Pastor Mike's up here screaming and hollering. Like, the thief walks in behind. And screaming. And you're sitting there going, I hope that a person over there is listening. They need this. Amen, Pastor Mike. You tell them. Leave up. Can I tell you something? God can't change you when you're focusing on everybody else's flaws. It's not that you have flaw, imperfection. Sayo, mga problema, kaluyahon, sa batasa. Ang Diyos ka nahan mag-change sa imong kinabuhi, pero dali siya maka-change sa imong kinabuhi. Sometimes ikaw mag-focus sa mga sayo sa uban. That was a mouthful. I could never say that again. All of us have a spiritual magnifying glass. And most of us use it for everybody else's mistakes. Hmm. Hmm. Watch now. If you want to humble yourself, take your magnifying glass and turn it around and look at yourself. Amen. Pride is so sneaky. And we've got to recognize it so we can push it down before it hurts us. Watch now. Before the pride, Michael, are you listening? Before our pride causes us to make a stupid decision. I can do what I want. It's pride. You're right. You can. You can. Listen, if you want to ruin your life in sin, God will let you. He's not going to stop you. But he's also not going to stop the results from coming. So what do you do? When you see the symptom, there's lots more. We only have time for three. Aren't you glad I only have three? But when you start to see your symptoms, that's the time you say, Lord, would you help me humble myself? Again. Well, I've humbled myself before. I need to do it again. And again. And again. It doesn't say stay humble because God knows you're not going you're gonna, to. You're going to get proud. He says, humble yourself. Humble yourself. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 3, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Wow. Itulong nga walay pagahimoon pinahagi sa panagbinkel o kawang na pagpagarbo. Apan diha sa pagka mapausanon sa hunahuna, itugo nga ang matag-usa mag-ila sa uban na mas maayo kaysa ilang kawalingon. I would like to tr- change that word ila to isip. Mag-isip sa uban na mas maayo kaysa 
Ila Mikhail Galingo, Yiva Isik means think of them, right? I think that's a little bit more accurate than Ila, perhaps. Can I ask you a question? Are you humble enough to look around the church and say, most of these people are probably better Christians than I am? That doesn't mean you have to say it, because once you start saying it, then it just feels fake. Yeah, I'm humble. I don't have to say it, that's silly. But are you humble enough to look around and think, they're probably better Christians than I am? Or do you look around and think, I'm better than that one and that one and that one? That's what pride is. So here's the question tonight. We're done. Do you need to re-humble yourself? I think most of us probably do. Most of us probably. Hey, you have an eight young people? You fighting with your parents? It's time to humble yourself. Husbands and wives fighting? It's time to humble yourself. Neighbors fighting? Church members fighting? It's time to humble yourself. Say, well, what, if, what about that? Don't worry about that. It's you and God, not you, them, and God. Well, Pastor Micah... How do I humble myself? This is the easy part. Are you ready? It's not easy to do, but it's easy to understand. Do you know how to humble yourself? Because, I mean, practically, how do you do it, right? I'll tell you how you do it. Do all the things that your pride hates. You say, pero maula como sultana. That probably means your pride hates it, so you should do it. Your pride hates saying, I'm sorry. Right? So you should do it, because that humbles you. Your pride hates saying something good about someone else who irritates you sometimes. So you should do it because it humbles you. Your pride hates admitting that you were wrong in the argument. You ever have an argument and then as soon as it ends, you learn that you were wrong and they were right and you hurry up and walk away before they can say anything? Here, I'll teach you a really good way to handle that. Oh, I guess you were right. <laughs> that works. And they say, yeah, I know I was right. Okay, now they're the proud one, but you're, you're okay. Learn to say I'm sorry. Learn to accept an apology without stomping on them. Hey, learn to let other people have their way. Something like that. Hey, don't argue about stupid things, even if you're sure you're right. Humble yourself. When you're wrong, admit it. Learn to speak well of others. Do the things your pride doesn't like. That's the road to humility. And humility is the road to God's blessings. Humble yourselves. Can I be honest with you for a minute tonight? This morning at about 3.30, I said, God... I need to humble myself. I've allowed some pride. God showed me I'd allowed some pride in. And I said, God, we got to fix this. Do you need to do that tonight? On every head bowed, every eye closed.